My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta. I am a video instructor and video producer here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And today we're going to take a look at Final Cut Pro 10. So once you start Final Cut for the very first time, this is what you're going to be looking at. And we have three main windows in which that we're going to be talking about when we're working with Final Cut. We've got our library window in here. And we have our canvas, which will be our main output, and then our project window here. Currently, I have today's date in here. If you've never opened up Final Cut, and if you're opening up it the first time, you're going to have this icon right here, and this is our event. The reason why it has today's date is you need to have an event in your library, and you need to have a library for Final Cut to start up. So what exactly am I talking about here? Well. Imagine a library here, which is this icon. It, you can see it's a collection of these smaller icons. This would be our library, and our library is much like our physical library. If you actually walked into a library, what would you see? You would probably see a whole bunch of books. Each one of those books I want you to think about as an event. Because we have nothing going on here, we're going to go ahead and import some media. I have three different ways to import my media here. I can go ahead and click this icon, which is our import media. I can click right on this button here, import media, or I can go to file, import media. They're all going to do the same thing, and the shortcut is command I. Once I hit command media, I'll be brought to a bit of a browser window, and here it lists all the different areas of my computer and any attached devices. So. Here is an external drive I have, here is my main hard drive, and here is another external drive I have attached here. I also have favorites here. These are just shortcuts to different items. So on my desktop here, I've got a few items that I'm going to import. And I've got this one right here, which is just me walking on a dock. And as I'm hovering over this, you can see that it's playing back. In fact, I can hit the spacebar or hit the play button, and it will play back that clip. This clip is 31 seconds long. I can see that. I'm going to bring in this clip and I want to bring in just a couple other ones here. So I have this other clip here. I'm going to hold on to control to select multiple items and then what I want to do is actually bring them in. Now I have two choices when I'm bringing them in. I can either add them to an existing event. In my case I have this one event here with today's date or I can create a new event. Anytime I'm starting a new uh, video production, let's say for client A, B, or C, I'm most likely going to be having different events for them. So that way, all my media is going to be contained within that one event. So I'm just going to name this event demo. And now I have two choices here. I have copy to library or leave files in place. If I copy to my library, that will actually take the physical media, these files that are on my desktop, and put them inside my library here. So it will actually copy them over. This is extremely useful for, let's say, different photographers or videographers that may be out in the field, record to a card, like an SD card, and then plug it in here. We want to copy those files so that way we have our originals separated. Now, I could also leave the files in place. And what that's going to do is if I have an SD card, I leave files in place, it will actually be reading and writing off the card. So it's going to be referencing that media. If I remove that card, I won't be able to access any of my clips. Now in my case here, I have these files already on my desktop. So I have the choice here to either copy to my library or leave them in place. I'm going to go ahead and copy to library, just so that way I have a separate copy. For right now, I just want us to ignore the rest of these check marks, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn them off. And right down here, I have close window after starting import. Now, as soon as that happens, it's just going to double check my files. And you'll notice something right here in the center. This is our dashboard. Anytime that there's something happening here, if I click on this button, it brings up our background tasks. And right now, I can see that it's importing media. So it is physically copying from one area of my desktop into another hard drive, which brings up a good point on exactly what's happening here. As I mentioned, I can have multiple different events in a library. Just like a library can have lots of different books in it, and those books can be about anything. 
I can actually go to this specific library in my computer here. And I'm just going to do that very quickly. And I have an icon here in my computer which says the up and running library. And that's what I've got right up here. If I continually add stuff to this library with different events, so if I bring in more video files, photos, or music, they will actually be contained all in this one icon here. So this is my library. Right now it says 1.14 gigabytes, and that'll probably grow as this copies over. So it's only 39% complete. By the time it's about 100% complete, that'll probably be eight or nine gigs, probably a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Now while that's importing, can we have multiple libraries? Well, absolutely. In fact, a lot of times I will have different libraries so I can package all my content together in one spot. So recently I've been shooting a lot of 4K stuff, so I can come under Open Library here, and you can see I've got this 4K, and that's going to open up another collection of events. And so you can see under this different events, I've got lots of different media here that's uh, pulling up, and I can review that media. So let me just change this back here. So now I currently have two libraries open. Now, why wouldn't I just want to have a library every single time I work on a project? Well, for me, I may want to use this media in another event down the road. So I can actually cross my media here. So I can use something from my miscellaneous projects, and I can take this clip and put it into another event, and it's all contained within the same library. Again, I keep using that reference of, you know, pretend it's an actual library, and you can move a book from one area of a library to another area of a library, or even cut pages out and put it into another book here and there. If I try moving one of my clips into another library, right, so if I do this here, this is from my other library, and I'm pulling it into my demo library, it's going to ask me, hey, if you want to use this, we're going to copy this into this other library. So if I'm, I'm not physically moving it from one library to another, I'm actually going to be creating a whole copy. Now that works out great for me because I don't want to lose any footage down the road. So I'm just going to hit cancel for right now because I don't need to have that copy. I just want you to see what that's going to look like. And I'm going to go ahead and if I want to close this library, right, I'm just going to go to file and close library 4K. And it's going to close that library. And this is just about done importing here. But while it's importing, I could actually keep working with my clips here. So if I was working off of a card, I could have the card plugged in. And as I'm importing, I can still be reviewing my clips. And you'll notice that this will pause here as I'm doing anything. So I'm, I can just pause it, set my in point, set an out point, and review my clips. Any time that the mouse stops moving for about three seconds, the background renderer here, it'll continue doing whatever it was doing. So if it's importing or if it's rendering, it'll just continue along its way. So now that I have a few clips put in here, I'm just gonna double check my library size here. And I can see that my library size now is about five gigabytes big. Now again, these files actually exist already on my desktop, so I've copied them over, but now they're contained within this library. And if I added more events and more media, this library would continue to grow. So again, it's like as if I'm putting more books into this library. That's the last time I'm gonna make that reference. So now I've got some clips and I wanna to put together a timeline. What I wanna do is click on new project. I can also come up here in Final Cut and click on file new project. Or otherwise I can hit command N, which is going to do the same thing. So I click on that. And now it's giving me a dialog box. If yours doesn't look like this, it probably looks like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to hit custom settings so we can talk about this here. And the first thing it's going to ask is what do we want to call this? So I'm just going to call this intro to FCPX. And it's asking me which event do I want to store this timeline in? I can have multiple timelines if I'm going to be doing several different edits, maybe a rough draft edit, maybe a quick edit for a 30 second spot or a minute long spot. And I can have multiples of those, but right now I'm just going to have one. And it's asking me where I want to put it. Notice I can put it in my different events that I have here. I'm just going to put this in my demo 
and I'm going to start my time code at zero. If you have a specific time code that you're going to start at for uh, compositing or some effects on the road, you can change that. And then we have our video properties. Right now it's set to based on first video clip. And what that means is if I drop in my clip here, this is actually a 4K clip. And if I drop that into my timeline, it'll make my timeline 4K size. So it'll actually change the resolution here to 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. That's not what I want right now, so I'm actually going to change this to 1080p, 1920 by 1080, and since this might go to broadcast, I'll do 2997, and I'm going to hit custom. For our purposes here, I'm also going to want to hit drop frame, and I'm going to leave my audio and render settings as is. Now what's great about this is if I make another project right away, and I want the same settings, Final Cut's going to remember the last settings I had, so I won't have to change this unless I'm physically going to go ahead and change the properties and maybe this is going to be a 720p, then I'd have to come back in and change it. Otherwise, it's going to leave it as is, so I'll hit OK. Now, we'll have one more icon up here, and this is our timeline here. This is our project, and you can see that we've got a little slate board, and it says Intro to Final Cut, and now down here, I've got this empty timeline. So now that I've got these, let's review some of these clips. So I've got this clip here of me just walking on a pier out in the Apostle Islands. And as I'm scrubbing through this, I can get some information about it. So I can see exactly how long the clip is. In my case, my clip is exactly 31 seconds. If I select all my clips here, I've selected 46 seconds. I created an in and out point on this. And what that's going to do is if I drop this into my timeline, it's only dropping that much. I want to undo that, so I'm just going to hit Command-Z. And that will always undo. If I want to redo something, that will be Shift-Command-Z. And that will redo any of my actions. One thing that you'll notice as you're working through your clip, so I'm just going to grab this whole clip and drag it into my timeline. If I want to save my project at any time, I'll go to File, and you'll notice there's no save button. Final Cut will save everything as you're doing it. So any changes that I make are already saved. So in the past when I'd be working with Premiere or something and I'd have to wait for my autosave to pop up, that's not the case. So I reviewed my clips and there's lots of times that I may be working with time code. If I wanted something that I shot at exactly 2 p.m. on a specific day, this clip right here doesn't give me that time code because it wasn't recorded onto it. I was recording with another camera, and if I hover over this clip, check out what's happening in my dashboard here. So right now I'm on this clip, and it's showing me I'm at 21 seconds and 22 frames. If I hover over this clip, it's showing me exactly where I am in this particular clip. And on this clip, it's showing me the original time code of when I was shooting. All right, so this was shot at 11 o'clock, 11.30. And this was shot at about 6, 12 p.m. And I can just hover over that. Now, I have a lot of editors, when they're first editing, they, they want their second screen here, their preview screen here, right? We, we can see this, and notice it keeps jumping every time I'm in a different area. It's contextual on where I'm actually scrolling. I'm not actually clicking. I'm just scrolling. And if yours isn't playing back, let's just double check and make sure that this button is selected. This is our video skimming, and that's what we're doing when we're hovering over it. We're, we're just skimming. If I turn that off, nothing's going to happen. And I have another one next to it. That's our audio skimming. So as I'm scrubbing through this now, this will actually play audio back at the same time. I find that to be just a little annoying. So unless I'm cutting a vocal track, I typically just leave that off. Now, again, what if I want a separate a preview window for just my media here? Well, I can come up to Window, and I can show an event viewer. And now this should be a little bit more similar to working in Final Cut 7, Final Cut 10, Edius, or other programs. If I click on this, now you can see that this is previewing it in my event viewer while my canvas here has its own separate. Now what if I want more information about these clips? This is great that it's showing me the actual image here, but what if I want to see how long these clips are and I want some more information, which camera it's shot on, etc. I've got two different icons here and that's my clip film strip view, and then my clip 
list view. If I click on my list view, now I've got some more information. I'm just scrolling this over here. I've clicked and dragged in between these windows to get this out of the way just so I have some more information here. And here I can see there's my projects and I can see some different dates. By default, Final Cut always wants to organize things by date. And we can change that later on, but for right now, I'm just reviewing that. And here I can see the frame rate of which I was shooting. I shot this at 60 frames per second, and this is at 1920 by 1080. I shot this at 60 frames per second, and this was shot in 4K. And if I want any other information, I can right click and choose that here. So those are the main areas in Final Cut. So hopefully they can get you up and running. I have some other videos that will talk about how to actually start cutting some of our clips and adding effects to them as well. So in case you need to blur out someone's face or maybe brighten up or darken a scene, like both of these scenes here, this one's a little too bright, this one's a little too dark. So be sure to subscribe to my channel where I'll have more tutorials on Final Cut, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and all things video production. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta. Thanks for watching.